Hi, this is Alan Side, founder of Cascadia Workshops and the Black Belt Communication Skills Online Learning Program. Among my many clients, occasionally I'm asked to facilitate meetings. It's something that I used to do professionally a lot more than I do these days. I've spent hundreds if not thousands of hours sitting in meetings and have studied many facilitation methodologies from transactional facilitation and dynamic facilitation. I'm a certified trainer in a process called nonviolent communication. I bring a lot of tools to meeting facilitation. And the number one leverage point for effective group process is mature individuals. However, if you were to ask me five tips for effective meeting facilitation, these are what they would be. The first two are a couple of questions that about 99.9% .9 of the time I see are not asked at the beginning of every meeting. And if we simply asked these two questions, everything would become much clearer and the, commun the, the meeting itself would already have a little bit more structure. So the first tip is this question. What are we trying to accomplish? This tunes everybody's mind to what is our shared purpose together and at the end of this meeting for us to look back on it and say yes that was worthwhile, that was worth the time and energy spent. We need to know what are we trying to accomplish. Now the second tip which is the second question is how much time do we have in which to accomplish it? That is often assumed or implied Sometimes it's defined already because we have a set start and end time, but you might find it surprising how many meetings I attend where it is not clear how long the meeting is when the meeting ends. So I would ask those two questions at the beginning of every meeting. What are we trying to accomplish? How much time do we have in which to accomplish it? Now the third tip that I would share with you is before the end of the meeting, getting very clear as a group, what is the next action? Now there may be multiple next actions. For example, if you're talking about various projects, what is the next action for project A? What is the next action for project B? What is the next action for project C? So we know that leaving this meeting, there can be immediate forward movement on any of these projects or whatever it is that you're talking about at the meeting, but before people get up and leave, you want to be clear, what is the next action? The fourth tip I'll give you is you want to be able to sensitize yourself to when somebody in a meeting is needing empathy. Sometimes people come into a meeting, they're in some kind of pain, emotional pain, or uh, there's something that gets triggered or stimulated for them during the meeting. And often when somebody's in pain, they'll ask a question. For example, they'll say something like, how does this make any sense? And we need to recognize when that's not a question and when it is a question. When it's not a question is usually a statement of some sort of frustration or disappointment. And if we can slow ourselves down and offer that person empathy, it can help to strengthen the connections and help people hear each other better. You may not always want to take time inside a meeting, but you can. And especially the higher your skill level, the more successful you'll be at this. Let me give you an example. I was at a meeting with uh, some pretty high level change makers in my community and people who have their hands on the levers of power of various government agencies and uh, local organizations, presidents of some of the local chambers of commerce, directors of several uh, departments of our local government. At this meeting, one of the members, in the middle of the meeting, got up, pointed his finger at everybody, and said, you people! Now, as soon as he said, you people, I, I just knew, oh no, this is, this is not going to go well. And then he proceeded to say things, this is what he said, he said, you people, this circle is just a bunch of rich people who only care about other rich people. Who's taking care of those low income people up in the, the valley over there? We need to really start caring about them. And then he sat down. Now the facilitator of the meeting, 
she didn't know what to do with this. So she looked at her agenda, looked at him, looked back at her agenda, and then she said, okay, next on the agenda, this is what happened. Here's a statement of somebody's pain when they care so deeply about something and not knowing how to handle it, sometimes things just get overlooked. So the facilitator just started to move on, but I interrupted her and I said, uh, excuse me, uh, Madam Chairperson, um, just a moment. And I turned to this, this man, I said, Jerry, uh, are you feeling some, some disappointment because you'd really like to see more evidence in this group that there's caring and consideration for people in the community who have fewer financial resources. And he said, yeah, you could just hear the sigh of relief of, of him getting heard. And then I followed up with another question, which is actually the next tip. I said, Jerry, was there anything that you were wanting from the group in relation to what you just stated? Or was it enough just to get heard that you really value care and consideration for other people in the community? And you're wanting to see more evidence of that in this in this circle. Was it enough just to get heard or were you wanting something back? And he said, no, I just wanted to be heard. So then he sat down. Now this accomplished two things. The first was that he had the experience of feeling heard, which had not happened when he first spoke. The second thing that happened was that it allowed other people to hear him a second time and to hear what was important to him and what his values were. Rather than simply hearing you people are bad and don't care. So instead of hearing a judgment, they were able to hear him a second time and hear what was precious to him in his heart. That was really valuable because in the long run, it did help to maintain the connections among people in the group, as opposed to what sometimes happens, which is people uh, create a story about someone and we end up writing them off and saying, well, I don't want to have anything to do with that person because all they're going to do is judge and criticize me. Again, when we're in pain, we speak in ways that make it harder for other people to respond to us compassionately. And that's part of what I teach in the Black Belt Communication Skills Program is how to transform the way that we speak so that people can really hear us, so that we are met with compassionate understanding. And you can help people do this right in a meeting or if not in the meeting, outside of the meeting. So in that moment, I interrupted, I said, excuse me, Madam Chairperson. I asked him, you know, is this what's going on for you? He, he felt heard, I heard the sigh of relief, checked if there was a request, there wasn't. And then I turned back to the chairperson and said, thank you, I feel complete. And then the meeting proceeded. That took a total of two minutes or less. And it did, a, it did wonders for that group. So that's the fourth tip is just be sensitive to when somebody in the group is merely in pain and needing empathic attention rather than asking a question or wanting to problem solve or even judging other people. The fifth tip for running effective meetings is making clear requests or helping others clarify their requests. Now we need to be very clear what a request is and isn't. A desire is not a request. Oh, I wish someone would just go talk to that woman. Like in a group that I facilitated where there was someone who had been a big challenge for the group and somebody exclaimed, I wish someone would just go talk to that woman. That's a, that's a desire, but that's not a request. A request would sound like, I'd like to see a show of hands of people in the room who might be willing to go talk to that person. Okay, I see the number of hands. Please talk to me after the meeting. Thank you. Or... A proposal is not a request. I was in a meeting where somebody presented a beautiful proposal, a proposal I thought was beautiful, but then they, they waited after presenting the proposal. They stopped and they wanted to see what other people did rather than making a clear request of the group. For example, I'd like to see a show of hands of other people in the group who liked this proposal and, and, and feel like they could stand behind it. Or, I'd like to see a show of hands of people in the group who have feedback for me and who would be willing to have me contact them so that they can give me feedback about my proposal. See, that's an example of an actionable request. I can raise my hand to tell you, yes or no, I'm willing to talk to you after the meeting or not. 
See, that, that gives me something I can do. That makes it an actionable request. Now, true requests have four criteria. We need the request to be really specific because if you put out something vague, you'll get something vague back and that's not going to contribute to your needs. So we want the request to be specific. We want it to be doable. One of the worst things that can happen is for somebody to say yes to a request that's actually not doable. That will generate resentment, it'll generate disappointment. We wanna make sure it's doable. We want it to have positive action language. In other words, we wanna tell people what we do want them to do rather than what we don't want them to do. An example is a father with a teenage son who's watching a lot of television and the father says, son, I wish you would just stop watching so much TV. And the son says, sounds good, dad. I'm going to go outside and join a street gang. And the father says, no, 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 no. Let's go see what's on the tube. So rather than, son, would you be willing to turn the TV off when that program ends and pick up a book and, and do some reading? Would that work for you? See, that's actionable in the moment. And the fourth is present. We want it to be in the moment. We want to give people an opportunity to respond to us right now. So specific doable, positive action language, and present moment. So all of that adds up to an actionable request. So those are the five tips. In summary, asking the question, what are we trying to accomplish? Asking the qu question, and how much time do we have in which to accomplish it? At the end of a meeting, before people leave, knowing what is the next action, or what are the next actions on the various projects. The fourth is, being tuned in to when somebody is needing empathic support so that it doesn't disrupt the meeting, so that the meeting can keep flowing, and so that we can attend to the members of our community when they have issues coming up. And the fifth is being able to make clear requests or help other people clarify their requests so that they're actionable and so that people can respond in a way that contributes to the needs or that at least furthers the dialogue. Those are my five tips for running effective meetings. Thank you.